Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. After decades of producing thrust via forward-facing propellers, the first jet engine aircraft entered service during the later part of World War II. These air-breathing engines produce thrust using a turbine-powered air compressor, propelling the aircraft forward at fantastic speeds. This led to the development of turbojets, turbofans, and ram compression engines, which pushed newly designed aircraft further and further, allowing them to increase speed, altitude, and maneuverability. But for all their impressive capabilities, jet aircraft come with many new risks. Perhaps the most imminent danger of working with these powerful machines is their ability to ingest such large volumes of air. In the past, debris, objects, and even people have been unexpectedly sucked into their intakes, resulting in all manner of damage and injury. Technology for jet engines continues to advance rapidly. These modern engines have staggering intake capacities, as well as equally impressive thrust outputs. One of the more recent designs is the General Electric GE9X, which is specifically designed for the Boeing 777X. Designed to improve fuel efficiency on long-distance flights, it is capable of putting out 110,000 pounds of thrust, weighs 21,000 pounds, and has an intake that is roughly 13 feet in diameter. While impressive, it's important to remember that these new, large-scale engines also pose an increased danger. But it doesn't take a supersized modern aircraft engine for an incident to occur. For instance, in the early 2000s, CCTV captured a cone being sucked into the intake of an E-170 aircraft while it was waiting for the all-clear to take on new passengers. This aircraft was fitted with General Electric CF-34 turbofan engines, capable of putting out 20,000 pounds of thrust at most. They are also only four feet in diameter, a fraction of the size of those mounted on the 777X. When a jet aircraft is on the ground, it's imperative that proper distances be respected to avoid an intake incident. One of the riskiest processes of all is when the baggage is loaded, as it often coincides with refueling and testing. Some airlines have gone to great lengths to make baggage loading and unloaded as safe as possible. This includes the use of special vehicles and equipment that are put in place behind the engine. Typically, this consists of a self-moving conveyor belt, which a baggage handler can use to send luggage up into the cargo bay. Another handler will be put in a position to pack the luggage into place using a series of nets. 
Throughout this entire process, proper distance is respected at all times, and care is taken to ensure nothing is placed in front of the intake. While common sense can help prevent intake incidents involving man-made objects, organic objects are something else entirely. In fact, it's estimated that planes around the world industry suffer around $1.2 billion in damages due to a single factor, birds. As they are already in the air, it's very easy for a bird to get sucked into the intake, causing it to malfunction. However, engines are not the only part of the aircraft susceptible to bird strike incidents. The windscreen can also be damaged or broken, putting the pilot and crew's life at risk. For this reason, some companies, such as VZLU, have created specialized canopies designed to withstand these sorts of incidents. Testing involves using a high-powered cannon filled with various natural and synthetic materials. These accurately simulate how a bird's body might impact a windscreen in the air. Over the years, both commercial and military facilities have developed a number of ways to deal with birds. Some are more passive, like cutting down trees and moving nests. More active methods include blaring sounds of predatory birds over loudspeakers, firing air cannons, banger guns, and other ordnance. At some air bases, such as Texas's JBSA Randolph, bird strikes are so common that the Air Force employs a Department of Agriculture employee to scare off the birds each day. Though jet engines face many threats from the outside, one of the biggest potential hazards actually comes from within. Jet fuel, also known as aviation fuel, is a hazardous and highly combustible mix of various hydrocarbons. In order to reduce the chances of spills and accidents, most airports take great care when storing and moving jet fuel. It is typically kept in large tanks near the outskirts of the airport, as far away from the active runways as possible to maintain convenience while minimizing risk. It is moved to the runway via tanker trucks and then by special refueling trucks. Some airports even have a network of underground pipes to bring jet fuel from one place to another. Whatever the process, major airports always have emergency firefighting personnel and vehicles on hand to deal with any potential problems. Commercial airlines are not the only organizations tasked with carefully loading and unloading large jet aircraft. Militaries worldwide routinely work around powerful engines and large aircraft like the KC-135.
In the case of this plane, in particular, special drivable lifts are used to allow ground crews and flight crews to access the aircraft's storage areas more easily. The KC-135 is a particularly hazardous aircraft, as its primary mission is to serve as a mid-air refueling craft for other planes and helicopters. It could have as much as 200,000 pounds of fuel at any given time. It is also 136 feet long and boasts a wingspan of 130 feet and a height of 41 feet. This makes providing easy access to crews a big priority. Of course, most military refueling is done on the ground. This applies to small aircraft as well as large ones. In some cases, even a tanker like the KC-135 will undergo a process known as hot pit refueling. This is where an aircraft is refueled while the engines are still running, typically while it is on the runway. This procedure can drastically cut down on time between missions, as it can take a long time to warm up jet engines after they have cooled. Again, even though the engines are merely idling at this point, it is extremely important for crew members to keep all equipment and personnel away from jet intakes to minimize the chance of damage or injury. In both military and commercial fleets, there are aircraft specially designed to carry cargo from one place to another. Perhaps the most well-known of these is the Boeing C-17 Globemaster II. This durable, all-weather aircraft is 174 feet long and boasts a wingspan nearly the same length. It can carry up to 170,000 pounds of personnel and equipment, including tanks, armored vehicles, and more. Like many cargo aircraft, the C-17 features a large ramp in the rear of the plane. This allows for easy loading and unloading far away from the engines. C-17s also have rollers installed on the cargo bay floor. This allows equipment placed on flat pallets to be moved in without using machines or heavy equipment.
In rough conditions, a cargo platform can simply pull directly up to the cargo bay while the personnel push the freight inside. Though they are not tankers like the KC-135, C-17s have sometimes been called upon to deliver fuel to air bases or outposts all around the world. To accomplish these missions, the military has set up special bulk fuel delivery systems, mainly consisting of flexible bladders which are installed inside the plane's cargo bay. These bladders are durable and secure and do not interfere with the normal functioning of the cargo bay. The fuel is simply pumped inside, the bladders are secured, and the plane takes off toward its destination. Upon arrival, the fuel is pumped out into waiting trucks or tanks. In some cases, a C-17 may be called upon to airdrop fuel as well. Using the airdrop system, the Globemaster can ensure its allies are well supplied with whatever they need to keep their mission going. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.